Hey guys, welcome to my Math 2 SAT subject test video. In this video, I'm going to try to help you guys do as well as you can on it and explain really what the Math 2 test is all about. Um, just real quick, I took the test on this past May uh, with, with a good amount of studying. I'll go more into that in detail. And just kind of to give you guys an idea of how the test can be, the test has a huge curve. So even if you really, you only need to get 44 right without missing the, uh, the other six, there's 50 questions on the test and you get, yeah. And I left six blank and I still got a 780. So that means I probably only missed around two questions and I'm pretty sure I know which ones those are. I want to quickly compare the math section in the SAT one reasoning test to the math two subject test. The math one reasoning test only tests things up to algebra two. And while the math two subject test tests things like in pre-calculus and and trig, so things like functions and like series and sequences, but more a little bit more advanced than with the the reasoning test test. But I feel like in the math two subject test, it's easier to get a score like an 800 because the questions are much more direct and because of the curve. While in the reasoning test, it seems like there's always one or two questions that are designed, even though they don't test like high level math, they're designed to trick people and stop people from getting that 800. Next. Should you take the math two subject test or take the math one or even take a math subject test at all? Um, definitely, if you're gonna plan, if you wanna take the math two subject test, it should be if if you have completed pre-calc and trig, and especially if you plan on going into a math type field like engineering, or if the school that you plan to apply to requires it. But if you don't plan on going into a math intensive field, but you still want to take a math subject test or maybe your school requires you to take a math subject test. If you haven't taken trig or pre-calc, it's definitely a good idea to take the math one test because um, it'll be more fresh in your memory. But even if you don't want to go into math, but you still your school still requires you a math subject test and you've already taken trig and pre-calc, take the math two subject test, even though it tests higher stuff than the math one, because the math two things will be more fresh in your mind and you won't have to review as much. So something very important whenever you're studying, whenever you're preparing for really any test like AP, the SAT, or the SAT subject test, is that you, you wanna have the right prep books. So when I took this test, I just went to my local library and I picked up the Barron's book, which by the way, is probably the best book that you can use to study. I don't have it because I, right now because I went to obviously the library and I had to give it back. But the, the Barron's book is about two to three times harder than the actual test. So it over prepares you. This is, this is especially good if you already know most of the material on the test and you just kind of want to familiarize yourself with the type of questions on it and try to over prep yourself. But if you need a uh, special, more special attention and you don't feel as strong with, uh, with the curriculum, then you should definitely go with Princeton because the actual review part is definitely more concise and just easier to read than the Barron's. I bought the Princeton uh, review book as well, so I, I know how it is. I don't have it on me right now because I let one of my friends borrow it over summer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you feel like you need to review the material or you don't know the material too well, definitely go to Princeton review and then after that move on to Barron's so that because Barron's will over prep you and help you get the high score. Also, you definitely want to take the College Board release test in the math, in the in the big subject test booklet. Most libraries should have that, so go and and check that out. Take that the night before the test because it is about the same level as the actual test, and it'll give you a confidence boost because you will score better on it than you do on Barron's. So something else about the test is okay. So the layout of the test is like this: there is 50 questions, and with a big curve and typically if you get a raw score of 44 it, you get about an 800 and from there every minus one is uh, every minus one to your raw score is minus 10 points so this test is just like the reasoning test with the fact that if you miss a question it's uh, minus a quarter a point so you keep that in mind also they it progresses from easier questions to harder it's typically around the four, the first 40 questions that aren't too difficult so you you have to try to make you have to make sure that you get those easy questions, but at the same time you have to try to get them through them quickly to have enough time to get those extra points in the last few questions. Honestly, I feel like the time constraint the uh, this test is what makes it hard. 
um, because you don't have that much time to work out the more difficult, complicated questions. Okay, now that we have the prepping out of the way, I want to give some insight more specific uh, to the test. So first off, you need to know your functions. Functions in this math 2 subject test are, uh, is 50% of the test. So you have to really understand what a function is. You, you input an x and you get out a y. So you, I'm sure you know what, what a function is. I don't really have to explain it, but make sure you know, know the different properties. For example, know what an even function is, know what an odd function is, know what, know what a graph looks like when you take the absolute value. Know, know all those types of things. And if, you don't really, if you're not really 100% sure what I'm talking about, prep books definitely do uh, help you truly understand that. Something that really helps if you don't, if you're not really too sure, like with functions or with your algebra, is watching YouTube videos and your prep books, and especially while you're going through on your prep books, taking notes is such a valuable thing because it can be. I, for example, as I did, I'll try to show it. Just math two SAT subject test. I'm sorry if it's crooked, but you see, it take down the notes of the important things because it's easier when you get closer to the, uh, to the test. You can actually just go through your notes really quickly instead of searching for it in your in your big prep book. So some other topics that you definitely need to know. Um, you need to know trigonometry. For example, you need to memorize the law of sines, the law of cosines, and double angle formulas. Now, if you don't worry, if you have trouble uh, figuring those out, you can put them into your calculator, and it just access them really quickly during the test. Now. You should also understand coordinate geometry. Let me just read off some of the things I have here. Understand coordinate geometry, no probability, no sequences and series, statistics, matrices, conic sections, vectors, limits. Now, if you're not really, what I mean by no is know the type of questions that they ask about these specific um, topics because the test repeats itself a lot. So they it often ask like similar questions about sequences and series that you can figure out quickly. Um, now something something very important is that you definitely need to know how to use your calculator. Okay, so as I mentioned before, something that makes the, sub, the math two subject test uh, pretty difficult is the fact that you're under on such a big time limit. So in order to help with that, you need to be able to use your calculator efficiently so that you can save time and invest that time into the harder questions and making sure you get those questions right. So, just really quickly, I'm going to show you guys a few things that you can, uh, that uh, you should be able to know so it can save you time. There are more strategies uh, that you can use that you can find uh, in prep books, but here are just a few of them just to show the power that the calculator has. Sorry that's kind of shaky, I'm actually holding my phone to do this, but anyway. Something that you have to do oftentimes with the subject test is you have to find out uh, in a function what y equals at a certain x. So instead of plugging in all the x's individually, it, it would behoove you to uh, do something like this. For our purposes, I'm just going to make a simple function like 2x squared plus 3. Then graph that. There's the graph. So now, say I want to find out what the y value is at x is equal to 3. I just go to second, and then calc, and then go to value, enter. Then I just plug in x is equal to 3, enter, and bam, it gives me the y value at that exact place. And once you do more practice problems, you'll see that this is a very uh, beneficial trick that you should be able to know. You should also be able to know things like, uh, go again the calc, how to find the minimum and maximum of a parabola. Uh, I'll go through that really quickly. For example, the minimum on this one, you can pull off like that, and it'll ask for the left bound. You just want to... Okay, you just want to move the cursor a little bit to the left of the of the minimum, then a little bit to the right, enter, then to the middle, and bam, it'll tell you. That's something that you'll probably have to be able to do also. Now, something also very important is uh, programs. Now, programs can only be done on the TI-83 or the TI-84 calculators, which are the best calculators that you can use on this test because scientific calculators are too limited, and these are just easier to use. Now, programs aren't uh, necessary, but they help a lot. I know that people think that they just aren't necessary, but they help a lot because they save you a lot of time. Um, and programs aren't that difficult to uh, 
to put into your calculator. You can just do a quick Google search or I know that Barron's review book tells you exactly how to put them in. So for example, right now I just have the quad formula and program into my calculator. So I'll just press enter and enter again. And there it asks for the A value. So I'll just put one and for B I'll put four and for C I'll put three. And there you go. It tells me the X values, right? Just like that. I didn't have to do the quadratic formula or factor in any way. And it works with complex, um, functions as well. So that's just an example of how it can save you a lot of time. So again, after you're done reviewing the actual material, you have to make sure that you do that you take as many practice tests as you can get your hands on and make sure you take them time so you can uh, know what to expect with the time crunch on the actual test. So if you're barely going to start studying and you want to kind of familiarize yourself a little bit with the type of questions that you're going to encounter, you should do the like 20 questions I think that the uh, college board has released on their website. So you can just kind of get a feel for it and then you can dive into your uh, review books. And when you go through your review books, you have to make sure that you take notes like I said before, because that's going to help so that you can, if you don't remember a particular thing that you read, uh, you can just go through your notes really quickly and pull that specific thing up. Um, some other tips that I can give you is make sure that you go to your library for resources for resources so you don't have to spend too much money. Um, you're more than likely going to be taking more than one subject test so make sure you start t uh, studying um, make sure you start studying about like two or three months beforehand so you can ha so you have time to study for all of your tests and um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a video I'll make videos later on when exactly you should take the subject test compared to like maybe like other tests that piece um if you're taking the math two subject tests for example you're probably taking it your junior and your junior you probably have uh, uh other standardized tests that you have to get through plus your ap's so i'm gonna make a video later on how to uh organize and when you should take everything so look forward to that and uh back to the actual test itself I, like i said before i can't emphasize this enough what makes the test difficult is the time limit, so make sure you take practice tests so that you get used to the time. Uh, that's kind of what hurt, what kept me from getting an 800 last time. I didn't have enough time to go through uh, six questions. If I would have gotten just two more of those questions right, I would have gotten an 800. But, but yeah, just make sure that you can get as many as them right, because every single question is worth the same. An easy question is worth the same as a hard one, so make sure you get all the easy ones, so that way you have a little bit of a cushion on the hard ones. Something very efficient to do while you're taking practice tests is, or rather after you take a practice test, is to go through every single question that you got wrong, and even those that you got right but you were even a little bit unsure of your answer, is to make a fla one flashcard, or refer to focus on the one flashcard for, uh, well they're, um, they're reflected backwards, but you get the point, you make one flashcard for every single question that you get wrong, so that way, um, you can make sure that you never get that type of question wrong again. Plus, uh, these are good to like just look at like when you're in the car ride to your test center. Just to kind of refresh on some things that you got wrong before to make sure that you don't get them wrong on the actual test if they do show up. And lastly, if you're not familiar with, if you're not sure what to do in a specific question or a specific math concept and you feel like your prep book doesn't prepare you very well, make sure you go to your math teacher they they will know how to make sure that you understand it and they'll be more than happy to help you um so yeah that's really all i have if you guys have any other questions or just any type of high school advice that you need or any type of preparing for college apps make sure that you guys contact me i i'm here to help i'll leave my the best way to contact me is through a twitter that i made uh, just go and you can direct message me. My messages are open, so I'll, I can get all the messages. Um, but if you don't have a Twitter, you could you could contact me uh, through email, and I'll leave both the Twitter and my email in the description. And if you guys have any questions, any more questions about this test or just anything in general, um, I'm just one message away. All right, guys. Well, I hope that this video was of some help. Um, make sure you guys uh, like and subscribe that could really help me out and I'll try to uh, start getting videos out more uh, frequently I haven't been able to lately because as school was ending I had finals and things and when, when school ended I I went to vacation with my family so I wasn't really at home to make videos but I, I should be able to now 
All right, so see you guys. Bye.